it for you. Hello and welcome to part 10 of my popular series of videos that look at common mistakes made by home brewers. Within this episode I'll be covering the potential side effects of sanitizers when left to dry on certain types of plastic, as well as a feature that looks at the differences in brewing science over the ages and how that despite the fact that knowledge and our ingredients have changed, many recipes have not moved with the change. The aim of this series is to raise awareness of common mistakes or misunderstandings so that homebrewers can find a better path and then move on to better end results. If you find that you are already on the right path within the topics raised in this episode then I hope you will find this at the very least to be reassuring. So let's get started. John Guest fittings have been used by homebrewers for over a decade now to connect hosing. These are made from a type of plastic known as acetal, which is approved by the Brewery Association as well as the FDA. Kegelan's duotype fittings were also made using acetal when they first launched, as the manufacturer felt it was a tried and tested material for such things. Because duotype fittings became popular quickly, Kegelan have had sufficient numbers of products out in the market, along with returns, so that they can look at improvements which are in part fueled by looking at what causes issues or product failure. After some time it was found that a number of returns of both duotite and John Guest fittings were displaying signs of chemical damage externally. This damage was found to be caused by acid-based sanitizers such as Starsan and Keglan's own Stellasan that have been applied to the entire fitting instead of just the internal parts. Now technically there is no single reason to actually sanitise the outside of such fittings, as only internal sanitisation is needed, but clearly this was becoming a widespread problem in causing cracking and failure in such fittings when such sanitizers were left to dry on the exterior. The effect that occurs when an acid-based solution is allowed to dry is that the concentrations of phosphoric and labs acid gets higher. As a result of this concentrating effect of the liquid sanitizer drying, this will get the concentrations far higher than they were originally specified in the sanitizer, and as a result the high acid concentration could cause chemical attack to the fittings. It is important to note that if you leave duotite or John Guest fittings submerged in liquid sanitizer without evaporation, you will see no issue whatsoever. It is really only when the sanitizer air dries on the fitting. It was for this reason in part that in late 2018 Keglan switched from using acetal to polyketone plastic, which has a great deal more chemical resistance and stops this becoming an issue. So if you were using Keglan duotype fittings made before this time or John Guest fittings, then you should keep this information in mind when it comes to your use of sanitizers. It is also worth realising that this concentrating effect that occurs when sanitizers dry can also have an effect on other plastic products around your brewery. Let's now move on to a section that I'm going to call All Methods Die Hard. Brewing, like many things, has seen a steady progression over the years due to breakthroughs in understanding and also in raw materials. Commercial brewers have certainly changed their processes greatly and yet recipes that are available to the public still come through that do not embrace these changes, even those that are written by many home brewers themselves. For example, if you were to go through the majority of all grain recipes that can be found on the internet or in books, you will notice mostly two different boil times. The first being 60 minutes which is commonly found with ales, and the second being 90 minutes which is commonly found with lagers or recipes that use Pilsner malt. In modern times these boil durations and the practices that that came along with them are actually very out of date, and yet for some reason people are still following and writing recipes according to old knowledge. Let's take a deeper look into this and compare the old with the new. Many years ago it was believed that hops needed at least 60 minutes of boil time so that they could have their bitterness extracted. This led to the standard boil time of 60 minutes as a minimum. Some will tell you that a 60 minute boil time keeps the beer sanitary, but frankly beer doesn't even need to be boiled to be sanitary, it just needs to be pasteurised, which actually happens during the mashing stage at the latest by the time you mash out. This is more than proven by raw brewing, which is ironically older than the old school brewing science that we are now discussing. In terms of hop bitterness, it is also now known that hops will impart bitterness much faster than was previously believed. In fact, you would not need to be adding many more hops by adding bitterness additions at 30 minutes instead of 60 minutes. After this video, why not load up your recipe calculator and swap a 60 minute addition for a 30 minute one, and you will see what I mean. 
It was also believed that hops that were used for flavour would need to be added at 30 minutes to fully impart flavour. In actual fact, the 30 minute time slot of a 60 minute boil is actually the very worst time to add flavour, which is why more modern recipes tend to push that to 15 minutes. Having said this, I still encounter recipes with 30 minute additions to this day, but frankly the same effect can be enjoyed in the same way, yet with fewer hops if the addition was added later, quite simply because the flavour is boiled off for less time. Time. It has also been discovered that different types of hot flavour can be brought into a beer at even later addition times than 15 minutes, and the trend now in some beer recipes is to add both aroma and flavour late. More on this shortly. Furthermore, it was also believed that hops added at 15 minutes and timings past this would just give aroma. So-called aroma hops are now placed either very late in the boil or at lower temperatures after some cooling, and it is also known that they add flavour as well as aroma. This is simply because of a vastly reduced boil off, and of course our taste and smell is linked. So if we now put all of this together with modern knowledge, we have the following. So very clearly we do not need lengthy boil times anymore for the sake of hops, and much more is known about adding bitterness, flavour and aroma. So what about the 90 minute boil for Pilsner malt based beer? Well, let's go back to the older times once again to understand why a 90 minute boil was important. Pilsner malt based beers were boiled for 90 minutes as this is a very effective way of protecting against DMS, which is to simply boil it off. The extra 30 minutes were sufficient, and this extra time was needed because SMM levels, which are the precursors to DMS, were simply much higher in Pilsner malt compared to any other. DMS is a sulphur that when present in beer in high concentrations produces an off flavour that many consider to be either vegetable or like cooked sweet corn. This certainly was the case, but these days are long over due to the many changes in the modern malting process. SMM levels in modern malt of all types, including Pilsner, are now at an all-time low. When using modern malt, there are really no concerns around DMS any longer, as long as you do not cover your brewing system fully during that boil, which will then hold the chemicals you need to boil off. DMS these days is a risk associated to yeast, which is one of the reasons why you should ramp up temperature towards the end of the fermentation. These changes to malt and updates to knowledge have had a major impact on the way that beer is brewed in general. Brewers of all types, myself included, often opt for the 30 minute boil these days. Many have tried this with great success, but the modern recipe writing practices are still taking time to filter through to brewers on many levels. That is not to say that everyone needs to change. It is a question of choice, but naturally at least the options are widening. I personally enjoy the end results more because less of the flavour from the malt and hops are boiled off, which adds an extra dimension to many styles. It will be interesting to hear your thoughts in the comments section of this video. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!